For years, the world believed that the future of advanced chips depended entirely on extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV. This technology was seen as the only path forward, the key to unlocking the next generation of computing power and innovation. ASML's EUV machines, massive and intricate, became the backbone of the most advanced chip foundries powering giants like TSMC and Samsung. These machines, each costing hundreds of millions of dollars, were marvels of engineering, so complex that only a handful of companies in the world could even hope to use them. The narrative was simple, without EUV you couldn't make the world's fastest chips, it was a story repeated in boardrooms, labs, and news headlines, shaping the ambitions of entire industries. This belief shaped global supply chains and gave Western governments, especially the US, immense leverage over the tech industry. Control over EUV technology meant control over the future of electronics and by extension, the global economy. The EUV monopoly became a strategic asset, a choke point that could freeze out any nation denied access. It was more than just a tool, it was a powerful bargaining chip in international relations. Investment, research and even geopolitics revolved around this single technology. Billions of dollars flowed into EUV while other approaches were largely ignored or dismissed as relics of the past. No one seriously challenged the idea, DUV, the older technology, was seen as obsolete for cutting-edge chips. The industry consensus was clear, EUV was the future, and DUV belonged to history. The world watched as EUV-equipped companies pulled ahead, convinced the gap was unbridgeable. Every new chip release seemed to confirm that only those with EUV could lead the race. This was the status quo, until a new kind of tech war began to rewrite the rules. Suddenly the unthinkable became possible, and the myth of EUV's invincibility started to crack. The stage was set for a confrontation that would test the limits of innovation and national will forcing the world to reconsider everything it thought it knew about the future of chips. In 2019, the U.S. government launched sweeping sanctions against China's tech sector with a particular focus on targeting Huawei, one of China's most prominent technology giants. These sanctions were not just symbolic, they were designed to strike at the very heart of China's ambitions in advanced technology. The U.S. blocked China's access to the world's most advanced computer chips, and to ASML's cutting-edge EUV lithography machines, which are essential for manufacturing next-generation semiconductors. The message from Washington was unmistakable. China's rapid rise in the semiconductor industry would be stopped cold, and its access to global supply chains would be severely restricted. The impact was immediate and devastating. Huawei's once-thriving smartphone business collapsed almost overnight, leaving shelves empty and customers disappointed. Meanwhile, SMIC, China's leading chip maker, found itself locked out of the global race for sub-7 nanometer chips, unable to access the tools and technology needed to compete at the highest level. The sanctions were intended to be a knockout blow, freezing China's technological progress in its tracks and widening the gap between China and the world's leading tech powers. But instead of backing down, China responded with renewed determination. Rather than surrender, the country doubled down on its efforts. Billions of dollars were poured into domestic chipmaking, research, and the development of homegrown talent, as China sought to build its own capabilities from the ground up. The crisis ignited a nationwide drive for self-sufficiency, no longer just about replacing foreign suppliers, but about mastering the core technologies and innovating independently. Huawei and SMIC now faced a daunting challenge, to compete at the cutting edge of technology without access to the world's most advanced tools, forcing them to innovate under pressure and improvise with what they had. This intense pressure forged a new sense of determination, shifting China's strategy from global integration to building a parallel sanction-proof technology ecosystem that could withstand future shocks. The fight was no longer just about business or profit, it had become a matter of national pride, technological sovereignty, and the future of China's place in the world. Against all odds, the stage was set for a remarkable engineering comeback, one that would test the limits of innovation, resilience, and national resolve. Cut off from EUV, Huawei and SMIC turned to deep ultraviolet lithography, DUV, once thought obsolete for advanced chips. DUV's longer wavelength was seen as a dead end for anything below 7 nanometers, but necessity drove innovation. Chinese engineers bet everything on multi-patterning using multiple DUV passes to etch finer circuits. SMIC mastered self-aligned quadruple patterning, 
a complex process multiplying the density of chip features. The method was slow, expensive, and prone to defects. Western experts dismissed it as commercially unviable. Yields were low, costs were high, and the process was brutally complex. Yet with no other option, Huawei and SMIC invested relentlessly, refining every step to push DUV beyond its supposed limits. It was a brute force approach, trading elegance for sheer engineering grit. The world watched skeptically as China tried to win a Formula One race with a souped-up touring car. But desperation was about to deliver results that would shock the industry. The impossible was about to become reality. In August 2023, Huawei stunned the world with the Mate 60 Pro, an announcement that sent shockwaves through the global tech industry. The phone was powered by a 7 nanometer chip, crafted using deep ultraviolet lithography DUV, rather than the more advanced EUV technology that many believed was essential for such feats. What was deemed impossible by experts and industry insiders had suddenly become reality, defying expectations across the board. China had managed to mass-produce advanced chips using what the world considered obsolete tools, rewriting the rules of the game. The Kirin 9000S wasn't just a processor, it was a symbol of technological defiance and a testament to Chinese innovation. It was a statement of resilience, and the breakthroughs kept coming, each one more impressive than the last. By early 2024, Huawei had launched a laptop, featuring a 5 nanometer class chip, once again produced with DUV, pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible. Each new product chipped away at the myth of Western technological invincibility, challenging the established order. Now in 2025, Huawei is preparing to unveil a 3 nanometer chip, again, without access to EUV machines. The leap to 3 nanometers, once unthinkable, is now within reach, as engineers push the limits of physics and manufacturing. Even if costs and complexity soar, the determination to advance remains unshaken. These milestones mark a seismic shift in the global tech landscape. China is no longer just catching up to the world's leaders, but actively redefining what's possible in chip making, setting new standards for the industry. Each step forward demanded more ingenuity, greater resources, and a willingness to take unprecedented risks. Huawei and SMIC have shown that with enough determination and collaboration, even the most entrenched technological barriers can be broken, no matter how daunting they seem. The chip race has a new, formidable contender, one that's rewriting the future of technology. Huawei's ambitions go beyond clever lithography. For its 3 nanometer chips, the company is adopting gate all-around GAA transistors, a leap beyond the FinFET designs of the past decade. GAA offers tighter control, better performance, and greater energy efficiency, matching the world's best. Mastering GAA is a complex feat, but it's essential for next-generation AI and high-performance computing. Huawei is also investing in new materials, like carbon nanotubes, aiming to leapfrog silicon's limits. These carbon-based chips could one day deliver faster, more efficient processors. This dual focus, advanced architectures and new materials, signals a shift from catching up to setting the pace. Huawei is now aiming to define the future of semiconductors. Huawei and SMIC's rapid progress has forced a reckoning in the West. What began as skepticism has turned to respect and concern. NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang publicly admitted the gap is closing and questioned the effectiveness of export bans. Instead of halting China, sanctions have fueled its determination, creating a formidable rival. In 2025, Huawei began testing an AI chip to rival NVIDIA's H100, technology the US had banned for export. The West's technological monopoly is gone, the chip war is now a true race between two ecosystems. Silicon Valley faces a new reality, compete with a state-backed innovative rival that thrives under pressure. The view from the top has shifted from confidence to caution, the competition is fiercer than ever. Huawei's journey from near collapse to the cutting edge is a lesson in resilience and innovation under pressure. Sanctions meant to cripple instead forged a stronger, more self-reliant Chinese tech industry. The myth of Western supremacy, built on exclusive access to EUV, has been shattered. China has proven there's more than one path to semiconductor leadership. The chip war is now a global race, not a one-sided blockade. For the West, the challenge is no longer containment but competition. The next frontier will be won by those who innovate fastest, no matter where they start. The playing field is level, and the quest for technological supremacy is more dynamic than ever. 
The world is watching as the race accelerates into uncharted territory. 